Guys, welcome back to Stone Block 3, episode 7. In this episode, we are making an amazing create farm. Guys, at this moment, I want to pause the video. Behind me, you can see the fruits of our labor. Also, on your left, you can see the times to skip to. So, if you just want to see the tutorial, skip to the tutorial part. If you want to see me struggle with the whole setup, then just watch the video. Alright, guys, I hope you enjoy diamond destruction hammer oh my god guys oh my god Right, so I didn't have this planned, so we'll just create. I wanted to this to be nine white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, let's move one more block here so it's in the middle. Then I'm just gonna place my mechanical harvesters. Hold on a second, I think they need to be super glued. Yes, one, two, three. Wait, what? Uh huh. Hopefully this works. Well, we'll see, guys. I'm uh, as much as a noob as you are. <laughs> All right, guys. So we need to know how many piston extensions we need. If the piston goes here, we need one, 12. Now let's make it 13. Lucky number. 16. Let's make 32. <laughs> Just because we can. Now, mechanical piston. How do we make? Nice. Then you will also need some slime balls. Slime ball. Huh. Yes, you just put it on the piston. Alright, guys. Slime ball here. Nice. Do we need to super glue this? Well, let's do it. Super glue the whole thing. And now we need... How many did we say? 13. So that goes one. Alright, guys. Now we need to power this thing. Let's... Let's put a gearbox going into a shaft. Yeah, I like it. So, in this thing, I think it's too big. Let's, let's place this thing and see how many hands. Wait, so two steam engines into shafts. And you get this hands, let's see. Let's say. And then you need some space underneath them. Get the create wrench. And just shift right click oops and yeah right click but we had it set up correctly so basically this will uh, create a movement that will power up this thing now as you can see the boiler status is idle because it doesn't have any water or heat well f first of all this is okay you don't need more than this but yeah that's what i want i want it to be higher then you need the heat source underneath it. You can use basic campfires. Campfires. Which are very easy to make. But we got the blaze um, burners. Which provide much better heat. So the heat as you can see is... Uh, yeah. One. One. Well I expected more to be honest. Anyways. The next thing we need is to get some water to do so we'll need a setup of pipes like a so then you create an infinite water source underneath it and now you need mechanical pump so yeah replace that one with the mechanical change the flow so this indicates the flow of the liquid change the flow to go into the boiler and now you need to power this up. Well, one thing you can do, of course, which is <laughs> not useful, is hand crack it. And that way you'll soon enough get some water. Why is it not pumping? Hold on a sec. Maybe we need to place 
the water source one higher. Let's see. Is it pumping now? Seems to be pumping the water, but what if we go from the other side? Wait, what? When did that change? I so remember. <laughs> Direction inwards. When did I change this? Anyways. Now it should receive water. Hmm. <laughs> Very weird. Alright, guys. Maybe we need to connect this to a source block. Let's see. Pipe into a mechanical... No. I want it slightly... Like a so, yep. Place it right here. Everything seems okay so far. Infinite water source block. Small dog wheel. Let's uh, let's make it faster. Into a big one. Let's hand crack it to test it. Again. Why is the direction changing? Oops. This should be okay now. Right? Come on, please start working. Are you kidding me? Why is it changing, guys? Ooh. Finally, guys, it's working. Well, not very fast. Let's see. Now, can I make it so that this energy goes this way? This is not what I want, I believe. Or maybe it is. Hopefully we do it manually. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. What happened? What? It's moving? Why does it stop? Alright, guys. So we managed to get this going. I disconnected this. And, yeah. Just by hand pumping it, now it works. So basically, these hands turn this thing and this gearbox transfers the power back to this wheel, going into the pump, providing this with water. But, unfortunately, if we look at this thing, it says this contraption was unable to assemble because it's too large. So we're going to redo it and we're going to change it to two, maybe three mechanical pistons. Let's see. Alright guys, so I got this kind of figured out, but problems appear on every corner. So you'll need the second gear shift, guys. Why? Because when you place the sticky mechanical piston, it does extend with the uh, rotational force, but it doesn't come back. Let's also place the mechanical harvester. And yeah, two meters is okay for the test. You need to switch this. I believe, let's break it. Let's see if it has the default settings. So we got a sequenced uh, gear shift that hasn't been set up. Place it down, it does nothing. Then you get this menu. This you have to um, hover over and scroll wheel with your mouse until the second movement is selected. Same goes for this. And then you also need to decide, not to decide, but test. Test when, uh, which speed is uh, for your contraption. And this thing needs a redstone signal to operate, so let's test it out, guys. Also, the settings on your um, sticky mechanical piston by default are set to always place when stopped. And I believe if you do this, let's actually test it. Let's actually test it. So it will stop and break the farmland 
the potato or whatever you have going on. Yeah. However, oops. If you change it to place only when anchor destroyed, this should not destroy the plot. Yeah, but it will harvest. Right, let's grow some potatoes and also extend our ball. Oops, what is going on? Hello, can I please? What? Okay, so you can place more balls after you've used it. This is getting difficult, guys. It's getting difficult. So let's extend that to length 13. Let's also change... The Oops, no. And yes, let's increase that to 14. Let's test it again. Oh, no, 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 no. You see? It broke the thingy before changing the settings. But now, it's actually working pretty good. So that's amazing, guys. So the next thing we have to figure out is um, how to create a pulse, a redstone pulse. I don't know. We'll see. And also extend this machinery. All right, guys. A very useful block is a liner chases. We'll need nine. Uh, let's make 12. We could place a chest or something. In case you don't want to use glue. So let's see. So basically it connects to itself. Yeah, that should be okay. And maybe... Maybe one here. Actually, let's test this out. First, let's change that. Place the mechanical harvesters. Slime the line near chases. Let's put in... And let's give it a test. Oh my god, guys, it's working! Guys, it's working! It's unbelievable! Unbelievable! Nice! So, the last thing we have to figure out is how to provide the redstone signal to this thing. Let's see, does it have inventory? I can't access it. How about that way? Nope. So basically, this machine cannot be altered now. See, I cannot place anything. So you have to build your machine from the beginning to the end. I think now we can... Yes. So, I'll place an extra liner chassis. And I want to attach the portable storage interface to it. Do I need to slime it? Well, let's slime it. Just for the sake of it. Right. It definitely is stuck. Then... What I want is storage drawer, storage controller, and another portable. Hold on, nope. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. Hmm. Yeah, like that. So basically, those two things. Ah, no, guys. It needs one space in between. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for confusing. So, alright, yeah, this needs a gap, perfect. Now I need an, a redstone pulse to be going into the sequenced uh, gear shift. How do we do that? How do we do that? Ooh, this thing extends. Is it passing anything? <laughs> I'm not sure if it does. Because we have no connection. But, let's see. I think this is a, red, a redstone signal. So, let me check. Alright guys, that is definitely a redstone signal. So, how do we do this? How can we set this up? Alright guys, we got the storage working. So you need the chute or something to take away the items from the portable storage interface. Alright guys. Let's see. I also wanted to make this thing. Redstone link. Now, how does it work? I have no idea.
Okay, guys, let's give this a try. I made some redstone contacts. Very easy to make. Let's see if this works. Wait, what? Guys, we got this figured out with some vanilla redstone. This should work. Yep, it's working. Nice. I believe it's overcomplicated, guys, so you don't need to follow this. You can follow a rotational farm on the other channels. But if you like it, let me explain how it works. Let's start from the power. The power coming from the steam engine goes back to itself and it's pumping water to itself. It is also powering this gearbox which provides rotational force to the sequenced gear shift. Which we set to a delay of 5 seconds and also assigned some needed actions. Then this sequenced gear shift basically sends 14 signals for this piston to turn that way and 14 signals to turn backward. So after 5 seconds the mechanical piston starts pushing the contraption we made with the linear chassis. And basically on the contraption itself you have a chest, a portable storage interface, mechanical harvesters and also a redstone contact. The redstone contact once the whole contraption comes back it links with its second self and a redstone signal is sent via a redstone link. You also have to configure this as a default they are set to send. So this needs to be configured to receiving with a create wrench. Oops. And then I set some redstone repeaters for the signal to be delayed because otherwise this thing is still on and the contraption is not moving. The portable storage interface allows for any chests connected to the contraption to be transferred to another portable storage interface, which is then dropped into a chute and into a drawer control, a storage controller with our stuff here, which basically, yeah, you know how to. Well, guys, I'm not sure how it's going to be in the edit, but this took all day. Hopefully you learned some things. I definitely had some fun. It was uh, a troublesome day, but uh, yeah, we learned a lot of stuff. So guys, I've decided to completely restructure the room. Now it looks uh, kind of cool. And um, yeah, we've got the farm going. And we also added some, some sugar cane. Be careful, the mechanical harvester does break the sugar cane block, the first one. So you could set it up one higher for blocks like sugar cane, kelp, etc. Or you can do this. I've set up some water underneath, some sand, and some sugar cane on the sides. So, guys, let's begin from the end. You will need one mechanical piston which is made into a sticky piston using slime ball. Then you will need liner chases and mechanical harvesters, same amount as the width of your farm is. So mine is 11. You will need some chests, depending on how big your farm is, the more chests, the better. Two for me should be enough. Then you will need one portable storage interface. You will need a, a couple of them, but for the time being, we'll use one. A slime ball and some piston extension poles. The amount depends on the length of your farm. So mine is 21. 11 width by 21 length. So let's begin. I believe the best way is to place down the liner chases in a line one block away from your farm. Then place down the mechanical harvesters in front. Now place your mechanical piston. 
If you right click it, the face will be facing you and now you can use the slime ball to make it into a sticky mechanical piston. If you already done it, just shift right click and it will be facing the correct direction. After replacing the piston extension poles by right clicking into the mechanical piston. Then using a slime ball, right click on the liner chassis to make it sticky. Put your portable storage interface and your chests. So basically the chest will store everything that the harvesters collect and the portable storage interface will collect everything from the chest attached to the mechanism and will provide it to our storage. Next thing I want to set up guys is the sequenced gear shift with the redstone signal. I mean you can find your own way of doing it but uh, this is the one I like. So the sixth sequenced gear shift goes next to the mechanical piston and then you will also need the redstone contact to go one to go on the liner chases. So we'll need one more space here. So this should be okay. Place down the liner chases and this is where you need your wrench. So grab your wrench, your create wrench and right click until the redstone contact faces up. And then just right click the second one. These two, when they contact, they emit a redstone signal, which we need. Then, Place a redstone link on the top one and grab some, uh, some items to assign a frequency. I'll grab some carrots. Next, grab your pulse repeater and just stick it in the sequenced gear shift and set it to, let's make it six seconds. Last thing we want is the, the second redstone link placed next to the pulse repeater, but use your wrench again to right click on it and set it to receiving. But I don't want to add the network yet because I don't want this to start. Then let's set up the sticky mechanical piston and the sequenced gear shift. So for the piston, you grab your wrench and you need to change the movement mode from the default to this one. Place only when anchor destroyed. This will prevent the mechanical harvester from destroying the farmland. And the sequenced gear shift, you need to set two pistons. I do this by scrolling my mouse wheel, by the way. And this should be 21. And the B direction depends on the speed, on the rotational force that it will receive. So you can test it. If it doesn't work, you just need to change the direction. But hopefully this is okay. Next thing I want to set up is the storage. So for the storage, you need the second portable storage interface, a chute, a storage controller. I mean, you can use chest guys, but I like storage controllers and I've made some compacting drawers, but it's completely unnecessary. You can use normal drawers and a linking tool. So for the storage, you need to place the second portable storage interface one or two blocks away. We'll, we'll do it one. And the storage controller should go one block below the portable storage interface and a chute should be attached. All right, guys, small mistake from my part. The chute must be under the portable storage interface. And we link it that far away. Yes, we can. Nice. Alright guys, final thing is to set up some power. I used the steam engine, but it was completely unnecessary. A water wheel can power the whole system. Also, I want to show you a cool trick to max out the speed of the water wheel using soul sand. Alright, place one gearbox next to the sequenced gear shift. Then drag out about... Actually, this should be okay. Well, two is okay, but we place three. Then you place another gearbox dig out a small space and attach a water wheel to it. Place a soul sand here. So basically at the bottom of the water wheel and it should uh, go in with the direction of these things. So basically pushing it from this side. If it pushes from this side, the speed will be less. Build a box around the water wheel and you will need two water buckets, one on the soul sand and one above. And basically this, yeah, this maxes out the kinetic stress capacity of the water wheel. So you, in your let's play, you might have seen 256. This makes it 320, which is the maximum for a water wheel. 
All right, guys, I think we have everything set up. And the last thing we need to do is to provide the redstone signal to the sequenced gear shift. Let's test it out. So if we add our carrots, this should uh, power up this thing. Nice. So six second delay and a redstone signal will pass to the gear shift. Perfect, guys. And this thing was uh, set up correctly for us. As you can see, the thing just travels and harvests everything. You can even jump on it, which is amazing. And you cannot open the chest anymore. But everything it gathered went into the chest. Alright, guys. So this is basically it. The farm is now working and will be working forever. By the way, the six second delay uh, can be set to less, but there is no need. You can uh, do your stuff and yeah, I mean, the farm will be just working. All right, guys, now that we're done with the complicated, um, I, <laughs> this is my setup. I just wanted to create it and show it to you. I wanted to create something mine, you know, so I did. Now I want to, to show you the sa setup of the farm that we're going to use, guys. So, this is very easy to create. And you might have seen it from other creators using a magma block. But I think it's not usable anymore. So, instead of a magma block, you can place a water wheel just like a so. Then on that, you place the mechanical beating. Is it working? I think it is. Then the liner chest is... Hold on a sec. Let's place the water at the end. The end, let's place one shaft. Mechanical beating. Radial chases. Climb it up. Put some oak planks. Put some mechanical harvesters. A portable interface. And the chest. And then with your wrench... Select. Select five for mine. Yeah, one, two, three, four, four. So basically, you need to select the radius as ma as many blocks you placed. That's your radius to be selected. And now it should work, actually, guys. Yep. All right. Of course, you need. <laughs> Before you do what I did, you need to um, check the direction that it is going. So let's break that. I think we can this. Yep, place it in the correct direction. Place your mechanical beating. Place your water. And now it's working, guys. Check this out. That's amazing, guys. And much easier to set up than this thing. But it was nice to think about. So, yeah. I'm going to make some of those in a tower. And I'll be back. So, guys, so you don't need the shaft. It works perfectly without it. So I think I want to create like five or six or seven. Let's see. All right, guys. So I want seven, a seven floor tower. I want one for the sugar cane, kelp, hemp, wheat, beetroot, potatoes and carrots. Let's see how much stuff I need. We'll need seven water wheels. We got some. Ten shafts. Seven mechanical beatings. And seven radial chases. Radial chases. Whatever you want to call them, guys. Seven chests. Fourteen portable storage interfaces. And I believe nine shoots for the idea I have is enough. Then... For the setup with five mechanical harvesters, you will need a stack and a half of dirt per level. 
this point I was out of andesite, so we gathered some. Alright, we got some andesite now. Now we will need some iron nuggets. Let's see if uh, shift K works. Oops. It does not. Nine stacks of andesite alloy. <laughs> this should be enough for a long time, guys. Alright, so we got 60 iron sheet, 30 underside casing, and 60 underside alloys. This should be enough to make 30 more mechanical harvesters. Nice. Remember, we only need 5 per floor. Alright guys, so for this one, to sum up, per farm or per level, you need one water wheel. One to two shafts, one radial chases, one mechanical bearing, one chest, two portable storage interfaces, and one chute, five mechanical harvesters, five wood planks or whatever you want, plus one plank for the water wheel, and of course one bucket of lava. And then you need a stack and a half of dirt or sand depending on what you're building. For my setup, I will need everything described times two. So that's what I'm using. This will be just helpful blocks. And of course you need a, ha a stack and a half of the material you are going to farm. So let's begin by clearing out an area. All right. So for my setup, I want everything to fall down into this chute. Therefore, therefore, if you place a chute one block lower, or two blocks lower, and a bit to the side from your portable storage interface, and then click with another chute on your place chute, a channel will be created between the two. This is exactly what we need, because this... The items that the farm gets will go into the portable storage and then drop into the chute. And we will have a, a hole of chutes dropping into our storage controller. Then you need to clear out an 11 by 11 area. This is 11 by 11. Fill in with dirt. Make sure the farmland is two blocks away from the portable storage. And then you need to clear out these corners. Like a so. Then, dig a 3x3. Three three. You need to dig 3 levels down. Put down your water wheel. Place down a block. And add a water source. Add a shaft. Place cobble all around the shaft. This is to prevent water going down into the water wheel. The water that we will use to, um, to water the crops. Place dirt so like so. Place some water. This will water all the field. Now, place the mechanical beating. Right, we moved the farm one block. And now... Place the radial chases, slime it up, place the five planks and the portable storage, come on, like a so, and then change this to six. Then, let's test out which direction it's going, you just need to click the bearing with an empty hand, 
All right. Now you need to break the bearing. Don't place it. Then you need to place the mechanical harvesters and the chest behind it, like a so. Final thing you need to do when you place the mechanical bearing back, you need to swap this with your wrench facing the mechanical bearer and scroll until you see something like that, like a windmill. This means that the mechanical harvesters will not break any farmland. Alright guys, I also place some lights, one in the center and one per edge of the farm. This should be enough. Final thing you want to do is plot the land and plant your seeds or whatever. Alright guys, for the sugar cane we got almost the same setup but checkered. And you will also need two shafts. Alright, mechanical beating, radial chassis, slime it up, five material, a portable storage interface with one block away from the second one. Let's test out which way it's going. Okay, break it. Place the mechanical harvesters, the chest and the beating. Now place the sugar cane. All right, guys, so I finished off the third one is going to be kelp. Let's see if it actually works. Just need to. Oh, yes, it works. Nice. Why is everything floating? Oh, no. We got to the chest. All right. Attempt number two. Don't forget the chest. And place the. Deck. And place the beating. Let's go! This should work now. Yeah, I have no doubt it will work. Alright guys. So, for today I'm going to stop on three floors. We got the kelp going. It goes through the chutes. Downstairs we got the sugar cane. On snad. And we already have too much of it. And then in the bottom have some wheat. And everything is working. Shoots are falling down into this chute, which goes to the storage controller. And yeah, guys, we got so much sugar cane. A nice amount of wheat. Guys, so this is it for episode 7. I hope you really enjoyed it. It was troublesome, but it was also fun and we learned some stuff. Hopefully, you can build your own farm. And I hope to see you back soon. Bye, guys.